Hey everybody, Tim here with tonight's episode of Star Trek The Next Generation, Season 4, Episode 11, Data's Day. Um, wow, like I have a ton of notes. This is a fantastic episode. Um, not to mention, this is the second episode now that has Data's name in it. Um, so this episode has a lot of firsts for Star Trek The Next Generation. Um, it introduces Keiko, um, I almost said Keiko O'Brien, because by the end of this episode, that is her last name. Um, she's Chief O'Brien's wife. Uh, this whole episode, like, for whatever reason, I don't know if it was me projecting onto it, but I thought we saw O'Brien and Keiko, like, develop their relationship through Star Trek. But no, like, her first episode is the episode they're getting married in, which is fine. Um, this is the first episode that shows the Arboretum, where Keiko works. It's the first episode that shows the ship's barber shop, which has the uh, Valerian, the, the blue alien, uh, as the barber. Uh, he's unnamed yet, but I think his name ends up being Mr. Mott. I don't remember. Um, let's see. This is the first episode that has the nursery, because during the whole main plot of this episode, uh, they keep mentioning how a baby's being born, and at the end of the episode, we actually go to the nursery to see it. And finally, this is the first episode to have the Replicating Center, which is basically the store. Um, during the episode, with O'Brien and Keiko getting married, Worf and Data can't figure out what to get them as a gift, and they go to the Replicating Center, and they're trying to pick, like, oh, should we do glasses? Should we do this? They're, they're looking at the registry, basically. So it's kind of interesting. So I'm going to go back to the beginning of this episode and just kind of work my way down, because like I said, I have a ton of notes for this one. So the whole episode has a narration of data over the top of it and he's talking to bruce maddox which if you remember that's the character from measure of a man that data that he wanted to take data apart and then data ends up taking him to court to kind of whether or not data is sentient or not now at the end of that episode data tells maddox like if you keep doing what you're doing i will be willing to help you and this episode just is a little bit of a sequel where he's talking to Maddox and he says, like, I, I'm glad you're doing well from your last letter. You're, you're doing this right. Here's what it's like to be my, my normal day. And then he just takes us through this whole stuff with so many great one-liners. Uh, he mentions that this is the 1,550th day since the Enterprise was commissioned. Now, if you do the math, that ends up being a little bit more than four years so it, I guess it kind of depends on the definition of commissioned. So we're, we're on season four. So we've seen three years of the Enterprise. And Encounters at Farpoint was the maiden voyage of the Enterprise. So 1,550 days is over four years, which means either we're missing an entire year of the Enterprise that we didn't physically see what's going on, or he's going from the day that they first like decided to start building it, like tw 19 years or whatever since the Enterprise C was destroyed. I'm, I'm going to choose to believe that that's the day, it's been 1,550 days since they started building it. Just because I don't like to think that there's a whole year missing, but that's just me. Um, this is the first episode that has the day watch and the night watch. Now... I've worked retail for most of my life. I did overnight the graveyard shift for 10 years. I love night crew. So it was interesting to watch Data being in charge of the night watch and how the lights dim. And then Riker comes in and the lights come up. And then you, assuming there's a third shift in there and Worf takes over. And then when Data comes back for his uh, role on the bridge and he says, initiate night watch and then the lights come back down. So I thought that was really interesting. Um, to get into some of the great one-liners of this episode, uh, Keiko has decided to call off the wedding, and just Data's reaction is so good, where he's like, Keiko has decided to do something that makes her happy. And O'Brien's like, great! And he's like, she has decided to cancel. And just watching O'Brien be like, what? And then Jordy's like, mm, maybe next time I'll give that news. And then we start seeing Data kind of analyze, like, what he did wrong. Data also compares himself to a Vulcan more than a human, just because he has that trouble with emotions. Which is a great time to kind of intervene. This whole episode has a little subplot of a Vulcan ambassador who is supposed to be negotiating a treaty between the Romulans and Picard. So just kind of keep that in the back of your mind. 
So like I said, Data compares himself to a Vulcan. Uh, from there, he completely admits that Jordy is his best friend, which is interesting because if you go back to the episode of Legacy, Data talks about how he can miss people because his neural pathways start anticipating them. So it's great that he knows that he's going to see Jordy a lot and he can appreciate that value. And then he calls him a lunkhead because he's trying to figure out like the creative insults. So I love that. That's a great scene. Uh, from there, like I said, he goes with Worf to the replicating center, and he talks about how he and Worf are kindred spirits because they're both orphans, uh, they're both outsiders, they're both just kind of different than the rest of the crew. I mean, this this crew's primarily human, or at least the main cast is that we see, whereas Worf is the only Klingon, Data's the only android, and so they kind of have that thing together. Worf also talks about how he is unfamiliar with weddings, which again, coming at it from the hindsight, it's I can kind of see where the nemesis opening scene comes from, where Worf is at the wedding and he still doesn't really know how to act. So I thought that was really great. Uh, we have Gates McFadden, uh, Dr. Crusher, teaching Data how to tap dance, which is a fantastic scene. Uh, I, I did a little bit of research into it, that Gates McFadden is a professional tap dancer. If you guys have seen The Labyrinth, which I mean, who hasn't seen The Labyrinth? Uh, she's actually one of the choreographers for that movie, like with David Bowie and stuff. So she's a professional dancer. She's fantastic. And so for all of those scenes, Brent Spiner had a double because he couldn't dance, whereas Gates McFadden is actually doing those tap dance scenes. So it's fantastic. Uh, from there, we go to the first appearance of Spot, which if I was a little bit more prepared, I would have one of my cats here with me. Um, so Spot, he's unnamed, but we all know it's going to be Spot, and it's a different cat later on, but whatever. Uh, Spot is Data's cat that he's trying to develop a relationship with to kind of humanize himself. So that's a great little, I, I enjoyed seeing him. Um, and then the one thing that really stood out to me for this episode is Data, or I'm sorry, O'Brien, when he's trying to get Data to talk to Keiko about getting the, the wedding back on schedule, mentions that Data has known Keiko longer. So O'Brien, although he was unnamed, was in the first episode of Star Trek, even though we didn't see Keiko. So I, I want a little bit more of that backstory. Uh, we never will, but that really stood out to me. So... I don't know, I could be reading too much into it, but I thought it was great. Um, so then to get back to the main story, we have the Vulcan ambassador between the Romulans and Captain Picard. And then all sorts of stuff goes down. I've dragged this out for too long as it is. But it turns out that she is a Romulan and she's been a, she, undercover as a spy pretending to be a Vulcan. That's brilliant! Like, why have we not seen this before? It's amazing! Because Vulcans and Romulans are from the original same species that split. So why haven't we seen... I don't know. I thought this was fantastic. This whole episode was just great. Uh, if you guys have seen this one, go ahead and let me know what you guys think. I've gone on and on about it. I could keep going on. I probably should have done a live video about this. Uh, thank you guys for everything, and I will see you guys next time for Wounded.